Would, would you mind just explaining to us how many tires are required? And who's you? Uh, I'm with Edison Motors, and uh, they're with Highway Through Hell. Highway Through Hell. They're, yeah. I don't authorize Highway Through Hell. I'm, I've got things that I have to deal with here, unfortunately. Oh, they're all chaining up right now. There's like three of them that are all spun out side by side. There's probably like six or eight trucks that are blocking the whole road, so they're all getting chained up. I'm stuck behind all of them in the wrecker, so just trying to get them rolling here, but uh, I'll give it 10 minutes. Okay, so we're out here on the Coquihalla Highway, and they're going to call protocol tonight, which is basically they're going to make trucks start pulling in here, chaining up. They got the snow plows out, they're working, they're clearing the runway, and I kind of want to go over in this video how to throw on tire chains. As a logger in BC, I chain up a ton of trucks. I want to show how to do that, show you guys how to do it. Also, we like coming through here. When we come through here and they're calling protocol, I like to stop because we can charge these truck drivers a few bucks in order to throw their chains on. We'll charge them 60, 80 bucks and you can normally make some pretty good money. I'll show you how to do that if you're interested in a little side business, that's always a good time, but. Okay, I want to go over what protocol is. So in British Columbia, we have something called protocol. And that's when you're getting a major weather event, heavy snowfall, where they predict it to be above a certain amount. And what they do is they get all the emergency services ready. So you get your tow trucks out there, you get flaggers, you get CVSE, DOT. They all come out here and they get ready. And once trucks start spinning out on the hill, they'll turn the chain up sign on, they'll start funneling all the trucks in here. And then those trucks need to put their tire chains on before they're allowed to go up. It always turns into a giant shit show, but it is always entertaining. Okay, this uh, snow plow going by is the tow plow. I used to run this truck up here. I actually did a safety video on it. And fun fact, the owner and the inventor of tow plow reached out to talk to Edison about potentially doing a tow plow. I thought that was kind of neat. We're at the point where we kind of already filled our spot, so it's a little bit too late to get them in there, but it's just a cool little fact. A uh, cool fact about where we are right now, we're right at the heart of that TV show on Discovery, Highway Through Hell. I was actually on Highway Through Hell for a season, season nine if you wanted to check it out, but so who knows, we may say some of these guys working tonight. So right here behind me is the snow shed. So basically you leave the chain up area, you come out of the snow shed, and then you just start climbing an 11% grade for three, four kilometers. It is a brutal pull. It is incredibly, incredibly snowy conditions, and this is where the trucks can't make it anymore. Oh, and fun fact, when the trucks are coming downhill, this is where you see most of the wrecks. Literally, it can be a spectator sport watching semi-trucks wreck. There's a bridge deck that you can kind of see right past that light. That bridge deck gets incredibly icy. You get the, basically, the deck of the bridge freezes, trucks come down this big long hill, they come right to the snow shed where they have to go around a corner through the snow shed, they hit their brakes on the bridge deck, it ices up, they go sideways, they smash into everything. It's great fun to watch. Okay, so we are up here now at the top of the hill, the Zopkius brake check, and this is another area that gets brutal. So what happens is a lot of truck drivers are too scared to go down the hill, the snowfall, they don't want to get too far over. Trucks end up in here, plugged up all the way back to the highway, blocking the highway. This is not a good area to really sleep in. If you want to stop and the weather is bad, stop before the chain up area at the top of the hill. Stop before the brake check. Stop at one of the many, many rest areas, five, 10 kilometers away, because this can't handle the volume. It can't handle everybody sleeping in it. The trucks get plugged up, nobody can get through, nobody can get into the brake check. It ends up really poorly. Okay, so this is a brake check. What a brake check is, is basically at the top of a steep hill. You can see here, it outlines the profile of the hill. There's an 18 kilometer downhill grade ahead of us. It's basically the idea is to get trucks in here, get them stopped. It used to be much more of a thing back in the 1960s, 70s when you would have manual brakes, you would have to manually set your brakes to make sure they're adjusted. Now there's automatic brakes, there's disc brakes. It's much more of just mainly reminding people, reminding truckers that, hey, you got a steep grade coming out, might wanna check it, see if everything's okay on your truck. Make sure you don't have a brake already smoking, do a load securement check, and then just realize that you have a big hill going down here. Uh, they put a little thing here, you're supposed to compressor maintains full reservoir pressure that you are not 
struggling to have air pressure. Your push rod travels within, that's much more back to the manuals and the automatic slacks adjusters. You don't have any air leaks, all your air lines are secure, you're not overheating already, and your trailer survive, supply valves operate properly. In other words, you're not dragging your trailer, or when you step on your foot pedal, the brakes actually apply the trailer. But the whole general idea is you stop in here, you check your tires, you check your air leaks, you check your load securement, you get stopped, and then you start down the big hill. It's just a way of stopping everybody getting everybody to do a load check, then getting them to travel safely down. Guys are only, yeah, see these guys aren't even hopping out of their trucks yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they are. there you are. Oh, they put the chain up lights on now then, or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We noticed. We're waiting for CFPEs. So oh, okay. We hadn't seen any trucks for a while. We thought maybe there's a closure or something down. Yeah, further. I think there's a jackknife up at uh, 286. You could have been by Hope already here just fuck a half an hour ago. Just climbing up the hill by the island. Oh, is that yeah, what happened? We haven't seen any trucks going that's by. Why? Burling Island. Oh. Yeah. You guys are the first ones that have got through in probably 15 minutes at least. And I even stopped and grabbed a coffee at the flying oh. J. On top of that, I guess maybe very few made it after me. Huh? Yeah, we heard two of them went sideways at Hurling Island beside oh, each other. Four. 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 Oh, and, I, right. and finally, finally. They were able to get themselves at least over enough, and we were, I was able to maneuver around, you know, lock her all up and go. Want to bet that another guy spun out immediately after you guys trying Absolutely. to get by him? I was watching him in my mirror. Here they come. So that right there, that's uh, the crew for Highway Through Hell. Here's Dan signing off to possibly be on a TV show. Yeah, I'm we're, doing things. We don't promise things, but see if Dan makes the cut. So he'll be on the blooper reel most likely. Oh yeah, I'm going to be the R2D2 of TV. And that's Glenn there. Glenn actually was my cameraman on Mud Mountain Haulers. Right, believe it or not. Okay. We're offering chain up service. <laughs> we notice you're not too quick at throwing them on if you want some help. We're, uh, what are you doing? Are you filming? Yeah. For what? Uh, YouTube. We're uh, showing people how they can help truckers chain up. <laughs> so a couple points to figure out when you're chaining up is if you're gonna drive on or back on with this fender setup. You're not gonna be able to back on your chains because then you're gonna be working in there, tightening them up. So he's gonna have to drive onto his chains. So you would have the tails on the front and then the hooks on the back. So what Chase is doing here now is laying the chains out. He's figuring out where the tails are and where the hooks are. So the tails, he's gonna put to the front of the chain, drape them, and then the hooks are gonna be to the back. Okay, these are your um, tails. This end here is your hook. What you want to do, lay your chains out nice and neat, grab them in the middle, just up and over. So as the driver is going forward, we have to make sure that his lockers are in so he doesn't just spin one axle. If you pull forward and your inner axle or your lockers aren't in, perfect. one of your tires can spin and the others will stay, will not move and, and you'll, you'll just spin, you'll spin, the, spin chain the chain off. right off. So a Which good is part- Which I always back up, but it's hard. We're just being lazy with this truck. We're gonna come until this hook. Yeah, keep going. About halfway up the tire. Good! You start with the inside, because it's the hardest, and then you go to the outside where you can have use leverage and space to get it tighter. With the not boomer style cams and just hooks, you can't torque it to get it as tight as you need, and that's where having those cam locks comes into play to eat up the rest of the slack. There's many styles of chains. This is more of a highway style. So what you want to do, you got excess. So I'm going to have excess. Put your first one in first, then grab your last rung. Then you put that last rung in. That way your excess swap isn't coming up here and banging your trailer. About two links is the maximum of what you want. But if you have more than that, it can start flopping out and hitting things like this fender. Okay, one of the important things, once you got your tire chains on, you're gonna wanna move ahead a little bit, then stop, re-tighten them. That gets them really snug, you're good to go. Now that those are on, Dan, you can go ahead and use that cam tool. So what you do is you take the flathead, put it in there, fold it, and you keep two of them. So after Dan turned those, it ate up about an inch on every side. And these are ripping tight. You can play those like banjo strings now. So as that chain twists, as he's spinning on it, 
if it binds, you could always take the tool and give yourself extra slop to get this tail off. Okay, so this is what I mean. When they call protocol, they literally have CVSE, Canada's version of DOT, come out here. And what these guys are doing is checking to make sure everybody chained up. The amount of trucks that and it drives me nuts, they try and blow past the chain up area. They try and go up the hill without chains because they think they can. Then they spin out. Then they block the hill for everybody else. Everyone here should play by the same rules. The chain up sign is on. The chain up sign's on. Chain up, don't block the hill for everybody else. Don't be a dick. Let's see your light here. Hello. Watch out. Watch out. Oh, there's my gun. Oh, oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Dan's using the Night Buddy headlamp. Yeah, they're yeah, good. Okay, a lot of people bring these out. You don't need them. If you chain your tires up properly, you do not need these. I've been logging for 15 years, throwing three sets of chains a day some days. Never had to use these. As long as you do them up properly, you don't need them. The only time you really need those are if your chains are overstretched and blown out. And then just size your chains properly. Yeah. How's it going? Good, Curtis. Another celebrity showing up. <laughs> That's Curtis from Highway 3 Hub. So he's getting many customers? Uh, no paying customers. We're doing it for yeah. free. Yeah. That's cool. We, we haven't really approached them. We're just trying to get shit for the camera first. Yeah. And then uh, once all that's done, we might. Well, Hurling Island is all cleared up now. Is so it? You'll probably get a big rush. Yeah, Highway we're, 1, I think it's closed too. We were wondering what the hell was going on. And then... There's a couple of semi trucks crashed into each other at uh, Highway 1. There's some service and style here, eh? Loving it. Loving it. Love that guy. Love him. Are you okay? So Chase is hooking up the, the square right now. Okay, we should just have to tap this and it should be good. I think. I haven't used this new one. Customer ready. Ask the customer to tap now. Hey, it worked. Uh -huh. Uh, do you want a receipt? Yes, please. Loving it. Okay, uh, just enter your email there and we'll send you a receipt. All right, so we use this little mobile payment so he's able to pay with his credit card right on file and we can throw the rest of these chains on. That's how you make money doing this. Easy money, easy money. He's happy, we're happy, everyone wins in this. We're already wet, we're already in coveralls. Look at him, he's got nice pants on. All right, let's have a little look here. Yeah, let's uh, let's move them up just a little more. Just a little more. Okay. Lots of room. Want to sell them hit the park brake? There we go. Never get under until you hear that park and brake set. Oh, it's the goofy style. <laughs> what did I say? Next time we're doing the style of this, we're charging an extra 20 bucks. <laughs> we did, we did, technically. It's a question. When this episode is going to be on, I shoot for we're with the Edison Motors. I'm separate. Okay. And you're gonna go on our YouTube channel. It'll okay. Be maybe maybe a week or two. A week or two. And it'll be on Edison Motors YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Where are you going right now? I'm going to um Kelowna. What are you hauling? Um, this is empty. It's empty. What yeah. Do you, what do you usually haul? What are you gonna go get? Normally, um, we have different type of freight. Um. We normally, like, we 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 pull various things. It, um, it, it it's not standard. Have you had to chain up this year before? This is my first time for You're this year. Yeah. Last year was weak head, weak head. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, well, that's good. What do you think about this service, guys? Coming out here to help you. Loving it. Right? <laughs> Loving it. That's not bad. I asked the guy where was he last year and the year before that and the year before that. So I'm saying, I, I didn't know that you guys offer this service. All right, here, I'll uh, handle that. You want to go get the next guy? Uh... For me, it's a new experience, but I love the service. Yeah. I'm just saying, I love the service. I ask him, I, where was he last year? You know? Do you think, uh, do you think all the place, all the chain up here, we should um, sell us like Of this? course. Of course what? This service is brilliant. <laughs> this is this is outstanding. I love it. Seriously, oh, loving it. There you go. 
Joe, do you want a receipt? Yeah, please. Just type your email in. Thanks for coming out. Ah. Making some money. Yeah. Were you checking, making sure everyone's got the right amount of tires checking, chained up? Checking everything out. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Keeping our roads safe. Right on. Yeah. We're all we're trying. We're trying. <laughs> That's it. Good. That's good. How are you? Not bad. Yeah. Good. good. Yeah. No, it is. And it's just uh, this is just getting started. Oh yeah. Worst of it's not even here yet. Got a whole weekend ahead of you. We're gonna get you to back up yeah. a little bit. Just got a good clutch of them though, eh? Sorry? They got a good clutch all of a sudden. It was all backed up at Hurling Island. We were wondering what was going on. We yeah. were sitting here for 15 minutes. Well, now Highway 1's closed too, so everyone's oh. just fucking banging in all of a sudden. And then we got uh, we got staging in effect at Sawakwa. So everyone stopped at Sawakwa chain up right now yes. down there so we can get this cleared up a bit. Hopefully get back to normal flow. Hopefully. No shit. You like this, eh? Everyone gets to chain up for you. Yeah. Need these guys full time out here. Yeah, I think tonight was pretty successful. We showed some truckers how to chain up. We filmed a little tutorial. Highway Through Hell came out and filmed us. That was pretty cool. And we made a few bucks. But you cannot say that Edison Motors does not care about truckers. What other truck, and truck manufacturing CEO is out here showing guys how to chain up? You know, you can actually make some serious money if you think about it. Realistically, you can charge 80 to 100 bucks a truck. These long haul guys hate chaining up. They may have to do it maybe once a year if they're unlucky. They don't want to do it. They don't want to get out of their clean clothes, climb around in the snow, get muddy, get dirty. Sometimes it can take them up to two, three hours. I've seen it myself firsthand. They don't want to do it. If you're willing to offer to do it, you can charge 100 bucks. If you're good at it, you can do six to eight trucks an hour. That's six, eight hundred bucks an hour. That's some decent money for just some manual labor for a job that these other guys don't want to do.